Hi everyone, back here again for another video. Are you looking for a keyboard and mouse to use with your iPad? Whether it's the regular iPad or the iPad Air or the iPad Pro? The K480 is a very good and I must say a cheaper option that you might be considering and that's why you're watching this video. And the M585 Bluetooth mouse, it is a good mouse to pair with this keyboard. The K480 and the M585 both can be easily paired with my iPad. I just simply turn on the mouse and as usual, the power button is at the bottom. And then I select the number I want to use it with my iPad. I press and hold the button and then wait for the light to blink. And then the M585 name should pop up in my iPad. I simply select this name and then it's paired. First thing I recommend to check is the mouse's speed. Usually it's set to a slower speed and it may feel that it's lagging. I prefer it to be on the fastest speed to feel more like it's like I'm using it on a PC. I can change this in the general settings and then go to the trackpad and mouse settings. From this setting, I can also turn on or off natural scrolling. As it says here, if this is on, it will track the movement of the mouse like that of your fingers. So, when it's on, the scroll wheel will scroll the opposite direction. Meaning, if you scroll down with the mouse, it will move the screen up. So, if you don't like this, simply turn off natural scrolling. As for the secondary click, this is to set which side of the mouse click it will be the secondary click. I guess this is handy for users who are left-handed. There are more options or customizations that can be done from the assistive touch settings. Go to accessibility, then touch, then you'll find assistive touch. From here, go down to point pointer devices and click on devices. And though there are in total seven buttons on the M585 mouse, only five of it can be customized. The scroll wheel's horizontal clicks cannot be customized here. If you want to know more how to customize the buttons of the M585, check out my other video where I explained in full details how to customize each of these five buttons. The M585 has the normal clicky clicks. It's not the silent mouse. And what I notice is that the scroll wheel here is much smoother than the Pebble mouse. Anyway, if you're interested on a silent mouse, there is a silent version that looks exactly like the M585, which is the M590. Check it out in the link below. Now, connecting the K480 keyboard to the iPad is very similar with the mouse. In fact, it is the same for any Bluetooth device. After turning on the keyboard, I switch to the device number I want to set the iPad on. Then, I turn on pairing mode by holding on to this button on the right for a few seconds. And once the lights blink, I choose the name from the iPad and voila, now we're good to go. The K480 can be used in many devices, not only with the iPad, but with the iPad specifically, it should be at least on iPadOS 13.1. Similarly, the M585 mouse can be used in almost all operating systems. To use it with an iPad, whether the Air 4, the iPad Pro, or the regular iPad, it should be at least on the iPad OS 13.4. Using the mouse on the iPad works okay, but it's not as smooth as the Magic Keyboard's trackpad. Here are my mostly used mouse gestures that I use on my iPad. Scroll to the top right, it will open the control center. Point the mouse on any of the options, like volume for example, then click and drag to adjust. Then next, scroll on any place on the top and it will bring down the notification center. And just scroll and drag down to close the notification center and it's the same for the control center. 
With an app open, you can drag an app from the dock to show a slide over screen. And to switch the screens in the slide over, hover over the white bar at the bottom and drag. To hide the slide over screens, do a quick swipe to the right. Next, to show the dock, do a slow scroll to the bottom of the screen. And scroll down further will take you to the home screen. Scroll further down or slower and will bring up the app switcher. To switch between home screens, you can click and drag on any blank space on the home screen or click on the small dots that you see at the top of the dock. To change the pointer style, go to Accessibility Settings. And inside Pointer Control, there are different options like increase the contrast of the pointer, add color around the pointer, adjust the size, and turn on or off the animation. For me, personally, I prefer just the regular gray pointer. Last one, to show the spotlight search, Use the scroll wheel of the mouse. While you are in the home screen, simply scroll down using the scroll wheel, of course, and it will display the spotlight search. Just make sure that the natural scrolling is on under the trackpad and mouse general setting for this to work. Now, Let's see how these two Logitech devices are called multi-device keyboard and mouse. So aside from using these two devices with my iPad, I also use this on my iPhone. I can connect both the K480 and the M585 to my iPhone, and the process is exactly the same. And obviously, pairing it to my iPhone is by Bluetooth. Again, the process is the same with the iPad, so if you want to see the step-by-step -step details, watch it at the beginning of this video. Here are some samples of using these two Logitech devices between two Apple devices. Example, I have some photos from my iPhone that I want to copy to my iPad and because my iCloud is always full, so I have to manually transfer it. AirDrop is to save the photo from my iPhone to my iPad, but I just want to copy the photo, so handoff is what I want to do. I copy the photo from my iPhone via the share button and paste it on my iPad. Also, for my iPad, I can also copy texts or photos and paste it on my iPhone. To do this, just make sure you are signed in using the same Apple account on both your Apple devices. This also works for the screenshots that are saved in my iPhone. I normally use Instagram for my iPhone because the iPad version of the Instagram app sucks. So I browse it using my iPhone. Then if I want to take a screenshot of anything from Instagram, I use the shortcut Command Shift and 4 that will take me directly to the markup page. And so I can crop it or write on it, whatever I want to do. And from here, I can click on the share button and click on copy without saving the screenshot. I can delete this screenshot directly from this page. Then I can switch back to my iPad and then paste the screenshot that I made from my iPhone. There's a dedicated button on the K480 for the screenshot, but recently it stopped working on iPad OS, but it still works on Windows. And speaking of Windows, I can also connect the K480 and the M585 on my Windows laptop. The Windows laptop is my work laptop, and so I'm showing this for demo purposes only, as normally when I'm at work, I don't want to get distracted by all of my devices. I sometimes do this, but very, very rarely. So for the sake of this video, let me show you some time lapse. I have shown you guys earlier that I can connect both the K480 and the M585 to my iPad and iPhone. Now, connecting it to the Windows laptop is definitely possible too. Switching between devices is very simple. On the K480, I switch the round dial and then I know it's connected because of the light indicators. 
Same with the M585 mouse. I simply press on the switch button and it instantly switches devices and connects. I can connect three devices to the K480 all at the same time. It's not the case though for the M585 where I can use it on two devices only. And as you see here, the K480 I can use it on the Windows laptop, the iPad, and the iPhone. But M585, it's only connected to the Windows laptop and the iPad and not on the iPhone. So, although the K480 is not a high quality keyboard, it's plastic and it makes this squeaky sound when I move it, but with its multi-device functionality and coming in at a very reasonable price, this is a good keyboard to use if you want to go wireless. The M585 is my favorite mouse among the Logitech mice that I have. The clicks are not that loud, and I like the ergonomic form of this mouse as my hand can rest well on it, it reducing strain and fatigue. And with the multi-device capability coming with several customizable buttons, this is definitely a great mouse. I'm pretty sure I will keep these devices for a long time. Both should last for two years, though I got my M585 in June of 2020, in Windows, it looks like it will run out of, ju out of juice soon, but let me observe more because in my iPad, it shows the battery is 100%. On the other hand, the K480, I believe, will last me not a lifetime, but a long time, even if I use this every day and with all of my devices. On the K480 so far, I have passed my first year and the battery life is still full. So hope this detailed video is useful for you and gave you more info on how to use this two multi-device keyboard and mouse. Give it a like and subscribe to my channel to support me. That's it. Thanks for watching.